Yeah, and it is, and it's the reason why a lot of police are not receptive to this is because it it, it requires you to be um, well. Number one, selfless. You have to be. A, you know, you can't think about you. And the police are taught their safety is paramount. Well, I have mm -hmm. to teach my people that their safety is not paramount. The only person's safety is paramount are the people that depend on us, and that is uh, very challenging to our law enforcement staff members. And we have always had law enforcement members on our staff, and that's one of their major problems is, they, is um, on top of humility and um, learning how to under respond. So example is if someone spits on us, I expect you to be spit proof and I expect you to wipe the spit off and keep moving. I don't expect you to go beat people up because they spit on you. If someone pushes you, I expect you to roll off and keep moving unless that person represents a threat to someone else. You, if the threat is only to you, just simply leave. Now there's no threat. Uh, and so we, that humility that's required in order to be a person that creates a nonviolent environment, it's, it's extreme. Is that something that, uh, I mean, I imagine it's very difficult like to train yourself to, to be selfless in a sense in, in a defensive situation. Is that something that uh, people that have trained with you have found that they weren't able to do and moved on to different uh, lines of work? Or? Quite often, that is one of the most difficult things to do because uh, that and altruism in general, uh, just selflessness and, and, uh, and putting other people before yourself. It's one of the things that's most difficult for most people uh, as they're self-interested in their own uh, well-being. What they don't realize is that anyone who's going to be highly successful in anything can't think about anything but their mission. So imagine a football player going to play football but thinking about their, thinking about themselves instead of the game. They won't be a good football player. Imagine a boxer going, yeah, I want to box, but I don't want to get hurt. Um, so I don't want to get hit. No, the boxer knows they're going to get hit and they signed up. And they knew for a fact that they're definitely going to get hit. And psychologically, they prepared themselves to be hit and still be able to function as a boxer. And that's what you have to do as a professional. You have to accept the fact that you are going to be attacked. And uh, celebrate the fact that they attacked you as opposed to an old lady or a kid or some family. You should celebrate the fact that you have been chosen by this violent criminal because you prepared and you practiced for them and you prepared to 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 defeat them you should have prepared for that you should have gone through knife disarms and gun disarms and uh, all the things necessary in order to keep yourself alive prior to that situation you should have already practiced and that's why a football player can get right back up after getting hit really hard by another football player is because they prepared to be hit through practice they're not mad <laughs> they're not saying look I got I got tackled I'm mad no, they got tackled because they're playing football. They accepted the fact that there is going to be an adversary and the adversary is going to try to destroy them. And that's exactly what the other football players are trying to do. They're not trying to just simply do the least. They're trying to do the most to damage the other football player. And the football player can't take it personal. They have to actually embrace the fact that this is what football is about. And the moment that football player takes it personal and gets angry because he's getting tackled he's no longer good at football just like a boxer when a boxer gets angry that he got punched then that boxer is no longer going to be able to box they have to know that this is what they signed up for and they need to enjoy the boxing the competitive nature can you imagine a boxer saying i only like to box if i don't get hit that's not a very good boxer so we want to make sure that we don't produce people that are inherently inappropriate by psychologically preparing them so one of the things i do is i explain that it's better to die than it is to shoot the wrong person even once. It is better to give your life away than it is for you to kill someone else's family member uh, inappropriately. So if you understood that, then that means you can't have a false uh, furtive gesture shooting. You couldn't shoot an unarmed child that's not a threat to you. Mm. Um, and it's that kind of psychological belief stru structure that I constantly have to inundate in people in order to get them to understand what's psychologically expected of them so they can actually physically perform in real life.
Yeah, because that is so lost in today's police departments. Well, it's completely opposite. Completely. So the law enforcement community is taught their safety. Their also. safety is paramount. Mm -hmm. They're taught that um, it is better to. They even have entire. And this is what people have to understand: is that it's not the officer that's the problem. It's not the officer that made up these rules. The officer is part of a system that told them that their safety is paramount. What's most important to the officer is they get home to their family at night. What I tell people is, and this is what we stole in our program, what's most important is that other people get home to their families at night, and then once we make sure they get home to their family at night, we can then go home to our family, knowing that we made sure they got to their family safe at night, secondarily. If we get home safe and they didn't, we're failures because these people depended on us. They wanted our help and we helped them, whether they had money or not. And the most dangerous things we deal with are the, are the situations where there is no money, the people that are poor. Those are people have real danger. Our rich clients generally don't have any danger. It's Hollywood, they just have lots of money. So we use the fact that they have lots of money in order to afford the fuel and the vehicles and everything else that we use to help real people that are in extreme danger. But the psychological belief system is just as important as the physical uh, the physicality of the service provider so if psychologically you're not prepared to be selfless then you won't be in the person's greatest time of need so an entire belief system I have had to build around altruism and be able to support it through uh, maxims and, and axioms the ways ways of thinking that you must accept for example uh, law enforcement will say things to each other commonly. They'll say, um, hey, stay safe out there when they leave each other. Uh, at the end of roll call, when a police officer is going off to work, they'll say, hey, stay safe out there. Uh, what we say is that is in totally inappropriate because the only way to stay safe out there is to not go into danger. So what I teach and what we say to each other is make it safe out there. Make it safe out there means that's what you're supposed to do. Your task is, if there's danger over there, you have an obligation to go over there and make sure that that is safe, to make safe, not to stay safe. To stay safe, we stay over here when there's danger over there, and whatever happens, happens over there, and we'll go when we think it's safe for us to go. I'm going to start using that. Make it safe is the key to understanding your purpose. You have to go be the person that makes it right. And that's how people have a better quality of life, paying clients and non-paying clients. So everyone's a winner. Um, do not shoot anyone before you shoot the same a, a person in your family under the same exact conditions. Do not shoot anyone else's family member before you shoot your own family member in that same exact condition, that same situation. So if your uncle had a gun and he was standing there being threatening, would you shoot them now or would you sh talk to your uncle longer? If you're... Uh, aunt was standing there with a knife. Would you shoot your aunt right now or would you talk to your aunt or would you go tackle her with a knife so you didn't hurt her? Do the same thing for, for someone else's family, the same thing you would do for your own family for someone else's family. That's exactly what you should be doing. If you would do it differently for your own family, then you're wrong. And so once you explain it like that, it makes it easy. The rules of engagement are very easy. Don't use violence unless there is absolutely really no other choice. If your uh, grandparent was, uh, you know, some World War II vet or some Korean War vet or Vietnam vet, and they're shooting a gun off, and they're, you know, having some kind of an episode, would you shoot your grandfather right now? Or would you barricade them in the room and talk them down and get them to drop the gun or figure out some non-lethal way to, to solve your grandfather's problem where he's having some kind of mental episode? Yes, you do whatever it takes to save your grandfather's life, even though he's shooting a gun off in the house or wherever. So there's the fear-based way of thinking and there's the factual-based way of thinking. If you use fear to dictate your actions, you're always gonna have a negative and false and inappropriate outcome. If you use facts, then you will be fine. You will create a positive outcome because you're using the facts to determine your course of action. And so really what we have is a completely different belief system. And this is why I find it so disturbing when people say, well, you guys are like private policing. We are not. It is completely the opposite. And you would still need police to go out and write tickets and do the things they're doing, uh, even if you had a, a lot of people trained in threat management. Threat management is its own industry. It is the management of threat. It is how to create a condition where malevolence and inappropriate things cannot happen. Not how do we build a case for the things that have happened.
that's completely opposite. Uh, law enforcement is based upon prosecution. The concept is we enforce laws upon those who have broken them. Threat management is creating conditions where laws don't get broken in the first place. Those are two opposite opposing things. If you're successful at threat management, you don't have a prosecution, which means you're a failure as a law enforcement entity. A law enforcement agency that does not prosecute people for anything is not successful. In fact, they could be said to be derelict of their duties. In threat management, if you are prosecuting people, you are first and foremost a failure at properly managing threats. Secondly, you're terminated because no one wants to pay for negative outcomes. They're just not going to want that. True. So they're not related. The, the, the metrics, the, the core values, the purpose, uh, the objectives, they're completely opposite of each other, although they do uh, cross over. So a byproduct of law enforcement, i.e. police officers arresting and prosecuting rapists, robbers, and killers, means those people cannot rape, rob, and kill in the community anymore after that day they would end. True. However, wouldn't it be a lot more prosperous and a lot more appropriate if those individuals never had the opportunity to rape, rob, or kill in the first place? And that is what threat management is. How do we create a condition where the opportunity to do malevolent, negative things to other people does not exist. There is no opportunity. Opportunity denial is the key to having a successful and um, appropriate societal structure. Right. Yeah, and if we can get police things. officers to get involved in that, then it would it would really be helpful as well. And one of the things they express, and I have a criminology background in my education, and uh, they express most crimes are crimes of opportunity. You've left your door open, someone just goes in and goes through it. Uh, they see your house as an easy target while you're out of town or something like that. So mm -hmm. It's very difficult for people to measure uh, a negative example, like something didn't happen, and appreciating and uh, understanding that like something's been avoided, but like, it, it's certainly like something, you know, people need to take the steps to make sure the opportunities aren't created to be victimized. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is in a situation where you have uh, a lack of negative, you have a lot of positive. So it's easy to understand when you have a, uh, a lack of rape, robbery, and killing. So then you know that you're happy and mm -hmm. you know that something positive is taking place. Yes, sir. How are you? Excellent.